I have definitely had my fair share of challenges when it comes to working with Blazor, all thanks to render modes, and I don't think I'm alone on this. When I wanted to get started working with Mud Blazor as a control library, I hit all sorts of different snags, and it really comes down to the fact that I didn't understand render modes. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to look at getting set up with Mud Blazor in a Blazor server-side render mode application. I'm hoping that I can save you some time and headaches and avoid some of the mistakes that I made just by following the tutorial a little bit more closely. A quick reminder to subscribe to the channel and check the pinned comment for my courses on Dome Train. And with that said, let's go make a new project in Visual Studio. All right, so we're going to be making a Blazor web app. So in the list of projects that we have here, I'm going to select Blazor web app and we'll step through this together. And obviously the next part here is we just want to give this a name. I'm not going to get too creative, but call it something that you want to call it and pick a good spot for your code. I'm going to go ahead and press next on here. And this is where we need to make some important decisions. In particular, I want us to go to this drop down for the render mode here, and we're going to select server. If you go pick auto and get server and web assembly, I think that this can unlock some cool potential, and this is the direction I went the first time with working with Mudblazer, but I really didn't know what I was getting myself into, and I wasn't fully prepared to start working with this render mode. In hindsight, I think just going to server render mode would have been much better for me, and that's why I'm putting this tutorial together. So we're going to select server here, and the rest of the options, you can consider what you want for your own project. I'm also going to include just the sample pages here as well, just so that we have an app that we can run right after. Once we're ready, we can go ahead and press create. And there we go, we have our project all set up. So now it's time to get Mud Blazor installed. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the project to manage NuGet packages in this menu. You can also do this on the command line if you're more comfortable that way. But I'm gonna go search for Mud Blazor. And we can go add this right in, so we'll install that. Right now that we have the NuGet package installed, we're going to want to go to the underscore imports razor file. So we'll go find that right here, underscore imports razor. And this is going to be like the global using file that we have. So at the end of this, we'll add something from Mudblazer. And there we go. We'll add that line right at the bottom. And this way, when we're going to make razor files, we'll have access to the items inside of Mudblazer. Next, we have to go to the app razor file. So we'll open this up and we have a couple of things that we have to add to both the head and the body here. So I'm going to paste in this code here and actually I'll separate it out a little bit more so you can see, but we need these two links added in here. This is going to get us the style sheet. You can see the CSS file right off of the fonts, googleapis.com. And then we have this mud blazer minified CSS style sheet as well. And then we have these three providers that we add in to the end. Next, we'll modify the body by adding this script in here as well. So we have this minified JavaScript file, mudblazermin.js. So we'll get that added in and we'll go ahead and save the app razor file. By the way, I will have a link to a blog post that has all of the code that you can copy and paste along with all of the steps that I'm taking here. So if you're trying to pause the video and try to type out all this code that you see, don't worry, you can click the blog post in the comments and the description and it will take you to all of the stuff that you can copy and paste. So don't feel like you have to pause and try to rush to copy it all down or something like that. I'll take care of you. The final part that we need to do is we need to update the program.cs file to get the services injected. So what we're going to do is get the using statement for Mudblazer services added. And there was a little bit of a spoiler because it was on my clipboard, but we'll go ahead and add in builder services add mud services. This means that all of these Mudblazer services will be available for us now on the web application builder. And that way, when we create the web application, everything we need for Mudblazer will be available. Now to prove that this is working, what I did in my blog post, and again, you can go copy and paste all of this code that's in the blog post, was I went to the counter razor page. And if you didn't create your project with the sample that comes with it, don't worry, you don't have to go do this. This was just to prove that it was working. So what I'm going to do is replace all of the code that we have on here to have an updated counter razor page that has mud blazer components. This is effectively the same page. It's just that we have some mud components like mud text and mud button. It's still gonna have a counter, right? That'll count up with the current count. We'll still have a button with a click event. So nothing too fancy. It's just that we're using the different controls. At this point though, we can go ahead and run this and see how it works. Awesome, and we have our beautiful Blazor app now. So I'm gonna go ahead to this menu. We'll go to the counter page 
And there we go. We have the blazer components set up here, right? This is exactly what we would expect to see. The button works as we expect. I know it's not that exciting, but this is truly now using mud blazer components. So only a few steps to go ahead and get set up here. Not a super exciting tutorial, but a very basic one to be able to get set up and get going with mud blazer in a blazer web application. We are using server-side rendering, so that was an important step. If you're using the dual mode where you have a client and a server project that gets a little bit more complicated, not necessarily because of the mud blazer pieces, but just because there's a lot more stuff going on. And for me, getting started with blazer, that was a little bit over my head. I just wanted to start building some simple stuff. So I'm hoping that this tutorial helps you get up and running if you want to use mud blazer and you can avoid doing some of the complicated stuff that I accidentally did in my own journey. If you're interested in seeing other videos about working in blazer, you can check out this video series next. Thanks and I'll see you next time.